Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Good to see you again for another episode of Celebrating Act 2 with my partner John Coleman and the wonderful Dr. Liz Lister. Hi. Hi. Dr. Liz, great to see you as always. I, um, I was talking to a guy recently uh, who tried to get me into Sudoku. Sud Sudoku? You know, the, the numbers... Yes. Uh, crossword numbers. I don't know. Do they make Do they make them in your size, John? <laughs> I thought it'd be a little tight around the neck. Yeah. So, oh. Uh, anyway, I couldn't get into it, and I thought to myself at the at the moment that it's it was a lot like crossword, um, you know, the crossword puzzle in the newspaper with with words, um, and then I thought, gee, it's it's not quite the same as the kids on the on the machine, you know, on the computer going bang, 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 right. shooting each other and that kind of stuff. Yeah. But I guess the common denominator is you're using your brain and you're whether you're playing a shoot 'em up game on the computer or you're doing numbers or crossword, um, games and puzzles are actively taking care of your brain, which I think is a good thing, although I wonder about those games on the computers. Mm. So it brings me to the question for you. I'm sorry to get the long way around here, but it brings me to the question is activity for the brain as important as activity for the body? Yes. The answer to that question is definitely yes. It's a special bonus when they are combined. So uh -huh. to speak to the brain games that are getting a little bit popular right now, there's a zillion kind of apps, right? People are inventing these types of games to put on the phones. Uh, they're getting very, very popular. And in fact, a recent survey by the AARP asked adults, of course, AARP, we're all over 50. Uh, the survey showed that two out of three adults felt that playing those brain games would improve brain function and brain health. Turns out that the science does not really support that all that well. Luckily, there are some facts that we will talk about that do help the brain. But it turns out that if you're playing one of these little angry birds, I know I'm dating myself, that's from a long time ago, <laughs> these types of little games on the phone, you will what you will get is really good at that game. Ah. <laughs> Not necessarily. So my, it, in so other words, it wait, doesn't translate. I want to if take you're you off sharper the hook. at, sh yeah. I want to take you off the hook. Uh, my the, the most recent game that I played on electronically was uh, Pac-Man. So <laughs> thank you. So you're so far advanced dating. from us. Right. So if you're really good at playing, let's say a game where you have to do a memory recall, hmm. that. Unfortunately, it doesn't necessarily help you do better memory and recall with your daily life. It helps ah. you with that particular game. Should we get to the good news? Want the good news? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What actually matters, so what we're talking about when we talk about keeping the brain young and keeping it agile is neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity. In other words, the changeability of the brain, right? Even back when I was in medical school, it was pretty much the understanding the brain develops and it's done. But that is definitely, we know now that that's absolutely not the case. It continues to grow and change and we can learn. And what makes the difference is learning is new learning. New learning. Just the fact of learning something new. And to your point at the beginning, if it involves moving your body, that's even better. So for example, learning for learning a new language learning a new musical instrument, that's coordination between the brain and the body, or even learning a new dance. Then you're doing brain and you're doing body strength and you're doing balance and coordination. That's when you really are helping the brain stay in awesome shape. Sure, sure, I can see that. Um, and I think it's important, uh, is, you make an important distinction and that is that it's the learning. It's not just the brain activity of, uh, I don't know, watching television and following along with the cartoon or the drama. Um, it's 
the learning part of it. It's the challenge. Exactly. And the sol solving a Basi problem. Kind basically of getting out of your comfort zone so that you have to be uh, uh, pay more attention. Yes. Uh, like yes. I, I play backgammon almost every week for a couple of hours uh, for the last at least 15 to 20 years with a cousin of mine. It's rope. We have conversation. And so it's relaxing. And it's fun. I do crossword puzzles. But when I took up Sudoku, which I, I, I played it for about four or five months, at, very, at the very first, it was like, wait, I have to pay attention to what I'm doing here. Then it became more rote, and I didn't enjoy it as much as some of the other things. So being out of your comfort zone, I guess, is uh, uh, part of it. Yeah. That's right. That's exactly right. Turns out our brain cells are in, an easy way to think about it is our brain cells in one of two modes. One is a an active mode, and the other is a default I'm not going to say resting because it's not that that implies that it's not doing anything. That's not true. So what happens when we're doing new learning is the cells that are in default are being recruited to join those more active cells. And that is what stimulates the the continued uh, growth and development of the brain and all those neural connections. And that's what really helps. So that's that's kind of the, the skinny on the brain games. Yeah, There's that's... some more interesting news that I that I do want to share that also really has been completely proven to help keep our brains in good shape, keep good cognition for as long as we can. And that includes, besides good nutrition, that's always important. Hormones help, always. I'm always loving talking about that. However, meditation, it turns out that meditation does more recruiting of the activity of those cells. So those active cells literally recruit more cells during meditation. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. I thought that was really interesting. Yeah. Physical activity. I, 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 I practice about... Tai Chi. I practice Tai Chi all the time. Oh. And I find yeah. it very uh, calming. I wonder if that uh, is as, I, I feel like in a meditative state, would that qualify? That's right. Absolutely. That really qualifies because you're also moving your body and that mm. is causing blood flow. So mm. blood flow is going sure. through your brain. That's really, really good. And last but not least, you gentlemen will not be surprised to hear me talk about good sleep. Really? Mm. The more I learn about what happens in the brain while we are sleeping, it is absolutely remarkable. The cleanup that is going on, it's absolutely essential to good brain function to get ongoing good quality sleep. Now, what's fascinating about that, Dr. Liz, is that I have read over the years that our, when we go to sleep, I mean, it's a phenomenon that they're studying constantly. We go to sleep, we're not really resting. Our bodies are very busy. I think of that That's REM right. section of, uh, of sleep where your eyes That's are right. you know, all over the place. So it, yes. it's hard to picture that as that kind of busy body activity yep. as being restful. Yep, yep, yep. Or, That's right. That's correct. You got it. Very much not a quiet state inside the body and the brain. A lot of healing going on, a lot of cell repair, lots and lots of cleanup, especially at the level of brain, in all the different stages of the sleep. Of sleep. That's why it's so important. Wow. Great stuff. Well, you know, um, I've learned a lot, and I'm going to have to uh, take uh, bingo off my activity list for brain function. <laughs> Uh, can you hang around for another minute or two before you take your nap, John? Anyway, okay. Yeah, so we're, anyway. We're, try, we're trying to get out of this one, huh? Uh, yeah. So we should all go take a nap. Mm -hmm. uh, and to our uh, Dr. Liz and to our audience. So the brain's important, but there are ways to keep it active. And uh, at a future conversation, maybe we'll talk about uh, the little that is really known about Alzheimer's and other dementia and things that that uh, uh, people face, particularly because we're living longer lives. And so we have longer, happier times, but then you continue to live and some more of this is happening. And maybe there is a connection or we can learn more about some of the connections that are beginning to understand with brain activity and games and things like that. And uh, maybe uh, staving off some of these uh, diseases. I don't know that there is much connection yet, but uh, would like to maybe have a conversation about that someday. Wonderful. 
For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.